Hi friends and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be continuing our discussion we left off at last time with exploring how to calculate weight-based medication dosages, specifically in children. If you missed that video, I would suggest that you start there and I'll link that video for you below. It is a great overview of just how to approach these problems. I give you some tips and tricks to kind of keep you along the, the straight and narrow as you're working through them. So I would start there, but if you're wanting more practice, this is a great video for you. So let's get into it. If you're new here, my name is Anna and I'm a critical care registered nurse. I've also been a pediatric nursing instructor, so I have quite a bit of experience working out medication calculation questions. For our example for this video, we are going to be using IV morphine and a dose that's been ordered for a particular patient. And from this information, we are going to work several different types of questions out so that you get a lot of exposure to different types of calculation problems. For these examples, we are going to be giving a four-year-old patient weighing 39 pounds a dose of IV morphine. The dose that has been ordered is 0.15 milligrams per kilogram, and the concentration of the morphine we'll be giving is 10 milligrams per one mil. If we think back to one of the very first rules that I referenced in my previous video about approaching these problems, we need to make sure first and foremost that all of our units cancel. We should immediately look at this information and see that our patient's weight is given in pounds while the ordered dose was given in kilograms. We first, before we do any sort of calculation, need to convert this weight in pounds to a weight in kilograms. This is very straightforward. We'll start with the patient's weight. We'll then multiply by our conversion factor, make sure that our units cancel, and we calculate out our patient's weight. You can see that our answer has several digits to the right of the decimal point. And if we think back to our rounding rules, we are reminded that for weights, we only round to the 10th, which is one number to the right of the decimal point. So the weight that we're going to use for this calculation is rounded to 17.7 kilograms. Next, we'll need to find the dose that's been ordered for this patient. And remember that in order to calculate the dose, we will need to know what the weight-based dosing range is of this medication. This information is found either in your order sets, which was given to us here, or in a reference manual or some other resource. This too is very straightforward if our units are able to cancel out. We'll start with our patient's weight and then multiply by the ordered amount, which was found again in our order sets, or we could have looked it up in a reference manual. We will make sure our units cancel and multiply through. Again, we see that we have multiple digits to the right of the decimal point. Thinking back to our rounding rules that we talked about again in the first video, we know that if our answer is greater than one, we only round to the tenths. Therefore, our final rounded answer will be 2.7 milligrams of morphine. Now the dose is necessary information, and this is what the question asked us for, but the dose in and of itself doesn't tell us how much we need to administer to the patient, what the volumetric amount is of that dose. So in order to find the volume of the dose, which is the next thing we're asked, we need to know what the concentration is of that dose. This was given to us in the beginning as well. We know that the concentration of the morphine we are going to be using is 10 milligrams per one milliliter. We will use the information we just calculated for the dose, which was 2.7 milligrams, and we will multiply that by the concentration of morphine we were given. Our units cancel, and our answer is 0.27 milliliters of morphine, and we know that because our answer is less than one, we will round to the hundredths place. This answer is already reported to the hundredths, so our answer is 0.27 milliliters of morphine. Before we move on any further, let's determine if the dose that we initially calculated, the 2.7 milligrams of morphine, let's see if that is a safe dose for our patient. Now to determine if something is a safe dose, we will need another reference source to compare it to the um, either the ordered source or whatever source we're using when we calculated the dose. For this reference that we're gonna be using, I will be referencing an app called the PDStat app, and it is one of my favorite apps. 
I think apps are a fantastic tool to use as a nurse, and I've devoted an entire video to my favorite nursing apps and how I use them, and I'll link that below for you. According to the PDSTAT app, a safe dosing range for morphine is 0.1 to 0.2 milligrams per kilo. For this patient, we will need to calculate using their weight in kilograms what the dose is on the low end of the range we were given, so the 0.1 milligram all the way up to the 0.2 milligrams. So we're going to have two different calculations to reflect what the low dose would be for that patient as well as what the high dose will be. We'll look at the numbers that we calculate and determine if our calculated dose falls within that range. Again, this is very simple math if we make sure that our units cancel. We'll take our patient's weight and multiply it by the conversion factor we were given, which is the 0.1 milligrams per kilo, and we'll do the same thing with the patient's weight and the high end of the range we were given, which was 0.2 milligrams per kilo. Remembering our rounding rules, we see that the safe dosing range for a patient of this weight is 1.8 milligrams of morphine all the way up to 3.5 milligrams of morphine. We see that our dose that we calculated that was ordered, the 2.7 milligrams falls right in between that range. So yes, this is a safe dose for this patient. For these next two examples we're going to work through, we are going to pretend like we would give this medication over an IV pump which in reality is probably how we would administer a dose of morphine. So this first example is asking us what the hourly rate is, the infusion rate would be if we wanted to give this dose over 15 minutes. By finding out this information, we are able to program the IV pump with a set hourly rate that will infuse our entire dose at that constant rate until the dose is complete or has entirely infused even if it's less than an hour. Let's figure out how to do this. We know the volumetric amount of the dose, which is 0.27 milliliters. We also know that this amount, as tiny as it is, is to be infused over 15 minutes. We'll set up some basic conversion factors and make sure all of our units cancel. Remembering our rounding rules, we see that this medication would need to be set at an hourly infusion rate of 1.1 milliliters an hour for that medication to be infused. Our second example is a little bit more realistic. Rarely will you set an IV pump to give an incredibly small dose like that, the 0.27 milliliters over 15 minutes. Much more commonly, we will dilute that very small dose with some normal saline to have a larger volume, and that is the amount of fluid that we would end up infusing using an IV pump. This question is asking us what the rate would be in mils per hour if we diluted our final dose to a concentration of 10 milliliters and we gave it over 30 minutes. This question may sound complicated, but it is much more straightforward than you think. Even though we know that our dose was the 0.27 milliliters, this question has given us a new dose because remember that dose was just diluted to 10 milliliters. Therefore, we're going to start with 10 milliliters because that is the new volume that's going to be infused. We know that the 10 milliliters will be given over 30 minutes and then we multiply through by our 60 minutes that we know is in an hour to get an hourly rate of 20 mils per hour. Let's look at one final question. Before we administer any medication, we need to know all of the potential side effects as well as adverse effects of that medication in order to safely administer it. This information can be found in multiple resources such as an app or a pediatric medication reference manual. For this patient and from a nursing perspective, we are most concerned about respiratory depression when administering this medication of morphine. It's also important to note that morphine can also cause side effects of hypotension as well as nausea. I hope this video was helpful and that you are more confident in approaching weight-based medication calculations, especially in children. If you have any questions or any other types of medication calculation problems you'd like me to work through for you, be sure to put that in the comments. If you did find this video helpful, please consider liking it and best of luck with your medication calculations.